Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Jordi and everybody. Um, it's wonderful to be part of this um, important debate today. Um, I'm here representing Ecomos, um, which is based in, headquartered in Paris, um, but I'm personally uh, sending my greetings to you from Istanbul, uh, where I'm based. Um, Ecomos is a global network of cultural heritage professionals in um, all over the world um, with national committees um, in more than 107 countries, um, which means that actually we are your local partners you know in every city the, the national committee of ecomos in your country is ready to engage and partner with you i'd like to say that from the outset um, so a few points i'd like to make also trying to respond to um, what the esteemed local government representatives have been saying um, well uh, ecomos is uh, as you know, we collaborate a lot with UCLG, which is um, a, a fellow NGO um, in effect, just like us. We are part of the civil society segment of the culture sector. And uh, we've been witnessing the mobilization of uh, many different um, cultural organizations, civil society actors um, at the moment responding to the COVID. It, there's a great diversity and, you know, symphony, not, not cacophony, I should say, of um, different reflections and statements um, on the situation. Um, at ECOMOS ourselves, uh, we've just celebrated the, on April 18th the International Day of Monuments and Sites, uh, which we celebrate annually with a different theme. And this year's theme is shared heritage. So it was quite meaningful to have to adjust the, um, ourselves to see how we can still talk about shared heritage in COVID-19 circumstances. So of course, we've uh, been trying to adjust to the new realities to live with COVID-19. Um, we've been taking our events um, digital, of course, um, online, a lot of them, um, and also trying to um, understand perhaps different responses for the pre-vaccine and the post-vaccine eras. You know, we hear about uh, 18 months to deliver, deliver a vaccine and then in the uh, mid medium term, um, how we can already plan for um, a return to some kind of social gathering, you know, way of being. Um, so let me just remind you, as you all know really, about the, the benefits of uh, cultural heritage as one component of culture uh, can offer. We've already been um, offering comfort and uh, inspiration, lessons from the past, traditional knowledge and practices, um, and interesting uh, lessons from history about how actually in important urbanism developments have come about with epidemics and how to respond to epidemics with better sanitary conditions, for example. So we will be seeing the same kind of changes we are in history in the making. Cultural heritage is evolving in the making with new behavior forms, like it was mentioned, um, perhaps. Um, let's see, with urban commons um, pre um, providing um, safe spaces and um, responding with creative ways, uh, virtual site tours, heritage challenges. But of course, we know that uh, the heritage assets and heritage organizations, professionals are also at a very vulnerable uh, position. Um, we're uh, facing lowered priority of funding for heritage, um, economic stimulus packages not prioritizing it, um, especially over infrastructure projects. And with built cultural heritage, we have the added risk of infrastructure projects or uh, adjustments to um, you know, post-COVID life in buildings and heritage assets for potentially harming heritage. On the other hand, uh, when people are lost, especially the elderly, which is a form of intangible cultural heritage, we're losing precious knowledge, perhaps not to be replaced. You know, this is um, what uh, generations before us have uh, come to, you know, refine as some uh, ways of coping uh, with uh, situations uh, similar to uh, COVID-19, perhaps with, um, you know, different um, health crises, um, etc. Um, I have about one minute left, I believe. Um, right, Jordi? Okay. In that case, um, I will just say something about the recovery of tourism, um, how we do agree that there will be a recovery or local tourism and um, a way to enjoy cultural and natural heritage sites again. Um, points in response. Um, the, there is a risk, um, or not risk, let's say, but an interesting aspect of digital digitalization um, where a lot of built heritage you know 
there is the material embodiment aspect, you know, and actually I'd like to share with you a small um, example from where I'm based in Istanbul. I have a lucky view from my apartment of the Hagia Sophia. And um, I was just taking a picture of it, putting it on Instagram, and my friends were saying, oh, I'm relieved to see it. I, you know, they actually make sure that it's still there. So how to go back and, uh, you know, keep maintaining these physical places is going to be one question to ask. Um, education was uh, mentioned very much. Uh, SDG 4.7 on sustainability and cultural education. Um, this also affects how people react to confinement, you know. Um, the more educated levels of society, they um, actually have a better job of complying with lockdown. Um, unfortunately, we see this. Um, and uh, just uh, to close off, um, I would like to just commend the whole um, initiative of uh, UCLG and UN Habitat bringing together city experiences and they just need to be shared more widely because we need much uh, more a number of good local government practices to support culture and ECOMOS is here um, to um, support you with our expertise and knowledge. Thank you very much.